Mercedes-Benz S-Class W221 2005-2013 years of release. Today, if you are wondering is it worth buying a Mercedes-Benz S-Class W221 and what problems you may encounter during operation, then you are at the right place. So even those cars that were sold in the th southern states of the United States boasted a very good anti-corrosion treatment. Those cars that were officially sold by our dealers, it was even better. Of course, if desired, it will be possible to find corrosion, but only if the previous owners didn't intentionally paint over strong chips for several years. The most vulnerable spots have been known for a long time – seals, fender edges, hood, leading edge of the roof. However, S-Class owners usually keep an eye on their cars so it usually doesn't come to the appearance of any serious foci of rust. The real age of the used S-Class is more likely to be given not by the body paintwork, but by the tarnished chrome trim and worn out front optics. If you drop a little deeper, you can find damaged lockers and anthers, as well as peeling soundproofing coating in the area of the bottom and rear arches. On those cars that are operated in large cities, where auto workers do not spare reagents in winter, Small foci of corrosion can form on the screws and rivets of the hood hinges. It would seem a trifle, but if something happens, you will have to pay about 60-70 thousand rubles for a new hood. If possible, before buying, it's worth checking the condition of the trapezoid of the wipers. The latter is prone to souring. In parallel, you can evaluate how effective the drainage holes located under the windshield are. It's better to monitor the drainage in the future, since there are a lot of electronics in the S-Class and the likelihood that it will suffer from moisture is high. The heating fan in the S-Class lasts from 6 to 8 years. The charm is not bad, but the picture is spoiled by the considerable price of the replacement itself. On the oldest examples you can expect surprises from the pneumatic climate control valves. The valve for the front row of seats is located in the engine compartment and is well protected from external influences. With the valve for the back row, the picture is radically different. The engineers placed it in the front wheel well. It's not surprising that it's constantly under the influence of moisture and dirt, which is why it gradually turns sour. The pneumatics of the automatic door closer also suffer from dirt. Although, in general, the automatic closer turned out to be very reliable and regularly performs its function even on cars with high mileage. It rarely fails and mainly due to insufficient voltage in the vehicle's onboard net network. Of course, over time the system will crash more often, but you can put up with it. If you don't want to put up, you will have to fork out. In order for the automatic door closer system to start working perfectly again, you will have to replace the PCE pump and the actuators and the locks and all the electronic stuffing. Those who want to save money can try to sort out and clean the mechanism. The condition of the S-Class interior is often highly dependent on how the vehicle was operated. If only the owners was driving, then there will be no serious signs of wear even with a mileage of 150-180 thousand kilometers. It's not a matter if a hired driver was at the wheel who spent hours every day in the driver's seat waiting for the owner. In this case, noticeable abrasions can be found on the steering wheel trim, on the side seat bolsters and on the door armrest. The window regulator doesn't like too much of frequent use. It happened that on the driver's door it refused already to run 100,000 km. By the mileage of 120-150 thousand km, boxes under the seats begin to tap lightly. Very often they are joined by a rear shelf. Otherwise, there should be no noise in the cabin. If there are too many creaks and crickets, it's highly likely that the car was seriously injured in an accident, after which its internal panels had to be dismantled. They are not always installed back in compliance with the technology. Special attention when buying a used sedan requires a panoramic sunroof. It's important to understand that it also requires periodic maintenance. In addition, the sunroof is very sensitive to dust, which is enough on our roads. Moisture is the main enemy of the numerous electronic components of the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. If the water gets to the electrician, the number of failures and glitches will almost instantly increase several times. Even a damp floor covering, which many motorists simply do not pay attention to, can lead to failure of climate control, electric seat drives and other interior comfort units. With frequent pressure washes, water has a chance to reach the front optics ignition unit. Its tightness was not perfect, which is why the unit often fails. Another trouble with headlights is reflector burnout in bike Xenon optics. Replacing a reflector with a new one is not a cheap pleasure. It will also not be possible to use the more accessible non-original. There is not much of it for a Mercedes-Benz S-Class. 
The LEDs in the rear lights begin to go out over time, in the worst case, the lamp may go out entirely. Fan cooling system for S-Class can be considered and consumable. The fact is that the German sedans often wait for hours for their passengers with the engine running at idle, which is why the fan has to work almost constantly. As a result, its service life is rarely more than 6-7 years. You should not postpone the replacement. Saving on little, you can wait for critical consequences for the transmission and power unit. Another common problem is the S-Class is faulty ECU. Moreover, this problem is typical both for the initial 2.1 liter diesel unit and for the latest gasoline engines of the M272 and M273 series. The only difference is that in the case of a diesel engine we are talking about a structural flaw in the unit itself and the units of gasoline versions suffer mainly from loss of tightness and too high uh, temperature. Unskilled craftsmen also make their contribution who during chip tuning open the engine control units. The cost of the new unit is enormous, more than 100,000 rubles. If necessary you can use a used block, but you will also have to pay at least 30,000 rubles for it. In this case an already used block will still have to be opened and the correct software sewn into it. Needless to say such procedures are not done in garage workshops. We'll have to turn to qualified craftsmen whose wages will also turn out to be rather big. Now when the Mercedes motors of the M272 and M273 series have been studied up and down, their weak points are known to everyone. This includes a small resource of the gas distribution mechanism and the high probability of scoring in the piston group and the frankly unsuccessful intake manifold. As a kind of cherry on the top of the cake, the cost of maintenance and repair is very high. It's not surprising that some owners of S-classes with gasoline aids under the hood prefer to drive to the last, even knowing about the presence of seizures. In financial terms, it turns out to be much cheaper to add a liter and a half of oil for every thousand kilometers traveled than to spend several hundred thousand rubles at once on overhauling the engine. The too dense arrangement of the engine compartment also contributes to the low resource of the M272 and M273 engines. Mercedes engines very often have to work in almost critical temperature conditions. Four V12 engines, which were created on the basis of old units of the M112-100. 13 series, scuffing of the piston group is less characteristic, but in general there are no less problems with them. Considering the very dense layout and heavy loads, this is not surprising. Turbines also do not differ in large resource. On the other hand, if you assume that uh, someone drives the S-Class with a V12 under the hood carefully, then the resource of the power units will be quite high. But this is rather a theory. The first buyers didn't think about reliability at all and they certainly didn't restrain themselves in their desires to ignite. After restyling in 2009, sixes of the M276 series and eight of the M278 series began to be installed on the S-Class. In general, it's the restyled six-cylinder engines that can be considered optimal in terms of reliability. In the new V6 Mercedes-Benz engineers used direct injection, simplified the gas distribution mechanism and replaced the fragile aluminum silica coating with proven cast iron liners. The result was excellent, the number of piston group failures was reduced to almost zero. At first, the owners experienced problems with the gas distribution mechanism but, but after replacing the tensioners, its resource increased. As for the disadvantages, they include the sensitivity of the new sixes to overheating and their exactingness to the quality of the oil. The fuel system turned out to be a relatively problematic one in which German engineers began to use piezo injectors. However, even with these shortcomings, knowing about the problems of the motors of the M272 and M273 series, it's easy to put up. 8 M278 delivers more problems. As in the case of six-cylinder engines, piezo ceramic nozzles are the most troublesome. Not only was the resource initially not very high, but also the nozzles were very sensitive to overheating. Another weak point of the V8 engines is the phase shifters, the design of which turned out to be frankly unsuccessful. Often they do not even withstand 60,000 km. As a result, it turned out that the 8 of the M278 series didn't get rid of many of the problems of the 8-cylinder units of the previous M273 series, but at the same 
time it got several new weak points in its design. It's not for nothing that a number of experts, even if this is largely a subjective opinion, ventured to call the M278 series engine the most unsuccessful Mercedes engine over the past few decades. As if in compensation, the German company offered a 3-liter diesel unit for the S-Class. Of course, the combination of flagship sedan and diesel fuel in our country still looks inappropriate for most, but it's the 3-liter diesel engine that boasts the greatest resource and the minimum number of weak points. Another plus is that it's not prone to overheating. As for the typical diesel problems with starting the car in the winter and the demands of the fuel equipment on the quality of diesel fuel, the experience of operating Mercedes-Benz diesel crossovers suggests that fears about this are greatly exaggerated. The rear-wheel drive version is ideal in terms of reliability. You want a greater resource only from carbon shafts, which with powerful power units can withstand only 80-100 thousand kilometers. However, the shafts are quite easy to repair, so there is no need to worry about their short service life. Sedans with all-wheel drive are more problematic. Most often the owners expect unpleasant surprises from the transfer case, but it just easily withstands 200-120 thousand kilometers. Much more often troubles are delivered by the intermediate shaft of the wheel drive. The fact is that it passes through the crankcase of the engine, which doesn't in the best way affect the durability of its bearings. Due to the latter in the most unfavorable combination of circumstances, the power unit itself may suffer. Not everything is going smoothly with the replacement of bearings. They literally stick to their seats. As for the gearboxes, their versions differed depending on the engine power. With 12 engine relied on a relatively old automatic series 700 22.6. It would seem that the time-tested unit should be quite reliable, but the box was clearly not ready for such a high power. Even though the engineers have strengthened the box and worked to improve its cooling, in most cases the automatic transmission withstands only 100-120 thousand kilometers to the bulkhead. In isolated cases, the automatic on sedans with V12 serves 200,000 km, but only under the condition of changing the oil every 30,000 km and extremely careful driving. Does anyone buy a Mercedes-Benz S-Class with a V12 engine for a leisurely ride? The question is rhetorical. Unfortunately, the new 7-speed gearbox, which was indexed uh, 722.9 internally, turned out to be even worse. A lot of childhood diseases, quickly contaminated oil, a constantly overheating valve body, a minimum clutch resource. The first owners of the S-Class faced this even when the car was covered with, by an official dealer warranty. To the credit of Mercedes-Benz, it's worth saying that dealers unquestioningly replaced the torque converters and the valve body or even completely changed the gearbox. Subsequently, the 7-speed automatic was repeatedly modernized, due to which by the end of production of the S-Class in the back of the W221, its reliability became more or less acceptable. On the other hand, the current owners of the German sedan can no longer count on free help from Mercedes-Benz dealers, so it's better to have at least 100 to 150 thousand troubles in stock, which in any case, sooner or later will have to be spent on repairing the box. By the way, the minimum mileage, such cars all bit rare but are found in the case of the S-Class should be regarded more as a disadvantage. The owners of such copies are proud that the automatic transmission has not undergone any repairs, but this is only means that the new owners will have to do this. There is no doubt that the box will fail. Perhaps the only advantage of the 7-speed automatic can be considered a hardy mechanical component. This is, allows you to cope well with the, even the most powerful turbo engines, but nothing more. Whatever one may say, namely automatic transmissions, regardless of the series, can be considered the weakest unit of the Mercedes-Benz S-Class W221. Carrying owners who are not ready to say goodbye to several hundred thousand rubles at one point can only reduce the transmission oil change intervals to a minimum, install an additional oil filter and another heat exchanger. Unlike the automatic transmission, the suspension is the strongest link in the German sedan. The fact is that most of its elements are unified with those on sedans with an extended base and armored S-classes. As a result, on standard sedans with a short wheelbase, the suspension works in a very sparing mode, which in the best way affects the service life of its consumables. The main thing is not to buy a car in which the suspension requires serious revision. The price tag for most of the consumables is not 
at all humane. In this case, for example, official workshops will change hinges exclusively with levers. The cost of such a replacement will be appropriate. Fortunately, there are now a lot of craftsmen who are ready to take on the replacement of hinges and silent blocks separately from the levers. The savings in such repairs are very significant. With air suspension the situation is not so good. It worked flawlessly on the new sedans, but as the mileage increases, the probability of its failure increases many times over. Replacing the rack, compressor, filter and sensor will easily empty your wallet for more than 100,000 rubles. And since the pneumatic elements must be changed in pairs, the amount can be safely multiplied by two. Many owners are not ready to spend that kind of money, which leads to attempts to somehow restore the suspension. Non-original parts of dubious or origin and folk tuning are used, after which it's pointless to talk about the resource of air suspension elements. There are no complaints about the brake system. Of course, if we close our eyes to the fact that the original pets often withstand only 20,000 km, you should be prepared for this. This is the price to pay for the excellent braking dynamics of a very difficult car. From time to time the owners complain about the failure of the anti-lock braking system unit, but this problem has not yet become widespread. The situation is similar with sensors that can start to malfunction for no apparent reason. The S-Class steering boasts exemplary reliability. A small fly in the ointment can be considered a small resource of the hydraulic power steering pump, but nothing can be done about it. Considering the weight of the car itself and the very wide tires, the load on the pump is very significant. One can only marvel at the engineering solutions used in the Mercedes-Benz S-Class W221. The specialists of the German company have shown literally everything they are capable of. However, not all modern units were ready to work flawlessly for hundreds of thousands of kilometers. Rather, on the contrary, the first problems with them began already at the mark of 50-60 thousand kilometers. However, if you do not chase the most sophisticated versions of the S-Class, then the operation of a German sedan can be made relatively affordable. But only relatively. Even under ideal circumstances, a used S-Class will require a very decent financial investment from time to time. From the point of view of reliability, diesel modifications and sedans with new gasoline sixes can be considered ideal. After thorough diagnostics, you can buy a version with a V12. At least with quality service you can count on a solid resource of the power unit. If you wish, you can re really find a Mercedes-Benz S-Class in the secondary market, for which sellers ask for only 500-550,000 rubles. Outwardly, the most affordable copies look very good, and in some cases the declared mileage does not exceed 250,000 kilometers. It's tempting. Now slightly used Hyundai Solaris and Volkswagen Polo are being sold for the same money. But you shouldn't be deceived. You can be sure that the S-Class for 500,000 rubles has very serious technical problems. Identifying them by ear or visually will not work. Sellers, knowing full well the shortcomings, skillfully draw the attention of potential buyers to the strength and do not say anything about the problems. It is by no means recommended to buy an S-Class without thorough diagnostics by specialized specialists. If you are the owner, then be sure to leave a comment about this car. Your review will definitely help others with the choice of a car.